Welcome all together. I hope you are all doing well. In this video I would like to talk you through my complete process of painting, weathering and finishing tracks. Getting them out of my build along videos in order to provide much more detailed information and insight in the process than I can do in just a short sequence with a build topic. All my tracks follow 8 basic steps, no matter what I have in mind for them in the final look or something like this. I'm not the highest skilled modeler out there, but I do however always look for a more efficient way that leads to a good result in the end, so keep this in mind while watching. The tracks I'm going to paint are both for current projects like the VK3601 Tiger Tank prototype you will see in a short time and the Panzer 1s as well as for some vehicles I did build in the past and was absolutely not happy with the result, such as the Neubaufahrzeug and one of the Panzer 1s. All these tracks are designed and 3D printed by myself. If you are interested in my STL files in order to use them yourself, please check out my Patreon page. My special thank you for all who are supporting me there. The painting and weathering process, however, can be done to all other materials as well, that's not a limitation. And in case you are new to my channel, please do leave me a subscription, you are watching Tank Brusher 135th scale German World War II armor only. Now let's introduce my basic weathering process for these tracks and start with the first step. This is priming the surface. I use a primer as a technical layer. This means it has nothing to do with the final look, it just is there to provide a surface for the paint and weathering products to grab onto, a hard surface since this is where the vehicle makes contact with the shelf and we don't want to have bare plastic ice cleats after a week or two. There needs to be something hard between as well as the vehicle might be a multimedia kit like here with the resin printed tracks or the white metal ones you all know. When it comes to choosing a primer I go for this Elklet 2 that tries very hard. It's comparable with Mr. Surfacer for example or the Tamiya paint that a uh, rattle can paint. I don't have the space to use a rattle can so I choose this here for a convenience product. It can be used directly out of the bottle once it's mixed up. I don't have to deal with thinner. That was the main reason I grabbed for this bottle because five sets of tracks, there is some area to cover and <laughs> time matters. For the application I spray the primer systematically from multiple different angles covering the later vertical surface from both sides first and the horizontal ones in an X pattern, once from the one side then from the other, making sure the primer finds its way in every recess making sure our later paint and weathering products find good adhesion. Once that is done I leave the tracks for about 48 hours, giving them plenty of time to try completely before I can move on. Once dried we can move into the second step. I use a base coat in grey and this leads me to the question what grey to use. We don't want to use black. Why I'll show you in a second. But for now I use the same grey I use for the vehicle in this case, that's the German grey. But you will clearly see the steps following this one make a clear difference without stripping information. And that's an important point, the information in the painting. Let's do a short excursion into raw format photography. Since shipping around the model is a little bit inconvenient, the photo is the medium we actually share with others in the end. So it's fine to look at this step. Pure black and white have both special jobs to do in a photograph. One shows the absence of information and the other informs us about that there is no detail present. That's simplified of our application of course. But my backdrop here is pure black. No relevant information is communicated through it. Based on this I'm assuming there needs to be room left for both eye and software to differentiate between black and almost black. It is always possible to take information away but never to bring it back. Turret number color problem in black and white photos for example, you will be familiar with this, giving me the practical conclusion. 
to preserve detail in almost black surfaces, I need to start with a higher value, this means brighter, base color, and then shade it down to almost black later. So much to the theory, and I find this German gray here works perfectly fine, even with the vehicle is dark yellow in the end, or has another color like a whitewash, for example. The application follows the same principle as the priming. Let me use these seconds to talk about the original tracks, if they were painted or not. Or what we may know is that factory delivered tracks were not painted. They may be primed. Literature does not know about documents saying tracks were delivered in a RAL color, period. There is, however, spare evidence of painted or primed tracks around, but not to a scale that would lead us to a definite answer. Outside the factory on an operational level, tanks were repainted, of course, and in some cases, once outside the quality control management, we find references of crews choosing to paint them as part of a vehicle. But this is down to a company level or a crew level even until somebody says, hey, don't waste paint, whatever, <laughs> you get the point. So I go for an, always for a more steel appearance of the final track. Into my third step, the black wash, it's time to tone down the gray we started with. If you choose an oil paint or like me, a enamel product or enamel wash, doesn't matter. The goal is to take the most recessed joints to an almost black while leaving the general surface a bit brighter and therefore a wash is the way to go. On any wash the thinner is relevant. I tend to use enamel odorless thinner that's in turpentine oil over alcohols like mineral spirits are. The last ones do eat through lacquer paint very very easily and that's why I try to avoid them in general since I use a lot of lacquer paint, maybe not in this project, but in the general rest of my modeling. Nevertheless, even this turpentine may cause danger to small individual link tracks. Depending on how thin you applied the glue, they may fall apart again. It's another lesson I learned the hard way and one of these tracks I am replacing here right now are for the Panzer 1 Ausführung B, the Tellery build I did a while ago. You can watch the video, you will see what I mean. That was a horrible result in the end, just because the tracks came apart and I was not able to puzzle them back on together. I apply the wash using a larger brush, draining most of the wash back out into the bottle and spreading it thin over the tracks. What you don't see here is me having a small container with enamel odorless thinner beside my workspace. From time to time I load my brush with some of it, adjusting the coverage and the opaqueness of the product on the track. I don't want to drain the track. I could have painted it black <laughs> beforehand. No, I just want to glaze over a black layer of wash that leaves the gray shine through. This needs some time to dry now overnight. The tracks look different already, the gray is toned down and in some areas I already get a similar definition of recessed edges compared to a pin wash for example and this is exactly what I'm after here. After the whole thing has time to dry, it's now time for a dusting or speckling layer. And this is not a final effect, we're just creating the canvas Enhancing contrast here for the following washes and break up the monochromatic surface for an overall stained appearance instead. In my case it's an airbrush layer, toothpick speckling for variation in size of the dots is fine too. It was just not fitting for what I had in mind with my tracks. Some of them already made a beeline out for a very unused track and that's about the point the heavier the track is used or the older it is, the denser should the dusting layer become in this stage. We will go over this with a wash in the next step, so this is not a final effect, this is just really breaking up the surface, making a fresh canvas where a brighter wash can create contrast on. The color does not matter, here on my King Tiger tracks I used a almost white 
that works fine for a track that was not really used that much. Into the fifth step, that's a brown wash, it serves as a final visible layer. The brightness, or in other words the color value, is directly affected by the previously done dust layer. And its impact is very visible, or clearly visible, this is where the effect comes together. I use Trax Wash, a brown enamel product, and brown oil paint would do as well. The thinner, however, remains the same. Only thing I would like to add to your color selection is avoid orange tones. The material composition or the alloy of a Tracklink does not suit a bright yellowish flash rust. Please check your references on that. Application-wise, there is not a huge difference between this wash and the black or dark wash we have done before. Thinner can be used to adjust the overall coverage and the finish we get later on. If you have chosen the speckling method for the tracks instead of the dusting, this is where the difference would really come across now. The level of rust of course needs to be adjusted to what you have in mind for your project, fitting the overall deterioration you will show through the weathering process as well as the mood of your diorama. There should always be a little bit harmonizing going on, in my opinion at least. And as a result, it's quite visible the surface is broken up with the brown stains. And this leads me directly into my next step, and that's layering some additives. In this case, I just used the speckling method and another enamel product, like I always use. This is out of the splashes range, for example. If you use paint, oil paint, any kind of product that leaves a little bit more texture than normal paint does, you will be fine. Here in this case, as I said, I selected one out of the splashes range. They are in the middle between a paint and a more heavily textured heavy mud product, for example, and that works quite well. My intention for this step is to display dirt or stains, whatever that was driven into the vehicle answering the question what happened last week to the vehicle, where did the driver go yesterday, just getting a first layer. This does not necessarily need to have the same paint or the same color tones, color selection, than the rest of the dirt or mud weathering on the vehicle that happened today in our imagination. No, it's just um, showing some more use. These vehicles had a history at all. And most of the techniques deserve an extra video, once mastered of course. Here I use some pigments to add some more texture. Most of it will fall off again, but some will adhere to the drying enamel paint. Second to last step, and effectively the last step I would like to cover in this video, is getting some polished metal onto it. I use, in this case, an acrylic paint. I don't have uh, fancy weathering products for it yet. <laughs> they are always sold out when I order. <laughs> Nevertheless, we see a lot of tanks running around with some polished parts on their tracks due to driving on the street or on concrete or rocky terrain in general. And that's what I would like to represent here by just dry brushing some metal paint on the most top raised surfaces. You know, there's nothing special about this technique other than I experimented a little bit and I find it more fitting to do this in the process of finishing the track instead of doing it as a last step while the track is mounted, allowing for a last additional step or layer in the additives. And this is what I would like to do last is completely harmonizing the model with the theme I have in mind, the tracks and the vehicle. And this is something I can't show you here in this video because it's not attached to a single project but covers multiple track sets at once. Covering the story or the history of the vehicle driving its last 500 meters to the point where we display it as modelers, adding some static grass or wet mud effects. This is something we have to do in the project of the vehicle build itself. I can't generalize this to a point. But let me show you how the track looks after running through this process here, once they are mounted on the vehicle or here are prepared to join into the build videos that will follow up, like the VK3601 being the first vehicle making full use of this process. 
While the Neubaufahrzeug was a remedy work, I was not happy with the tracks I got in the trumpeter kit. It didn't look well. Now it is it is fixed to a point where it adds to the model a little bit more than the original ones. Yeah, but there is no additional weathering done on them because I think they are fitting like they are. More or less the same applies to the Italeri Panzer 1 Ausführung B. That's the one I did already build a while ago. Didn't <laughs> work out with the tracks. The Italeri ones are not that good and the replacement now is a good remedy work that it adds a little bit, I think. It improves the model, but there is no point for me investing now a lot of time into this kit that's already finished and in sitting in the shelf by now. With the photographs being the best way to share our modeling work, I would like to leave it there for today and I hope you got some inspiration out of it for your process, for your modeling. I'll catch you in the next video. So long for now. Enjoy modeling the way you like it best and have a great time. See you.